A normal day for us is probably uh, get up in the morning, have breakfast, actually either go to the race team, have a debrief, or then from that point uh, go do some functions. We start our season in March and go all the way through to December. 14 race meetings. A race meeting takes, it's about six days. We do another 100 or 120 days of promotional activities on top of that. Another big part of what we do is uh, the physical aspect, the physical training. To be actually fit enough to drive a supercar now is, is not necessarily just all about uh, being strong and being Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's also have a bit of uh, longevity, like in the sense of uh, cardiovascular. So bike riding, I do a lot of mountain biking now. I'm not a big fan of gyms. Most of my training is done outdoors, uh, either on my bike or pounding the pavement but then there's that strength element as well which yeah I'll, I'll get in the gym probably once or twice a week just to, to keep that strength up. The mental one is a, is a tough one it's, it's different for everyone there's not a, a certain way that you should do it. For me uh, obviously when I'm in a car you got to see switched on uh, think about what the car's doing how it's reacting how you're going to feed that information back to your crew but then when you get out of the car, you almost sort of switch off, which allows you not to be burnt out. And I think that's, uh, for me, has been a, a great asset. Cutting laps in a car, you know, being out there doing it is, uh, is the best fitness you can do. Away from racing, I still tinker on cars at home. So uh, I've got a uh, basically a little bit of a workshop at home. Uh, so I'm always, if I'm not behind the steering wheel, I'm always under a bonnet or under a car. Um, love motorbikes, whether it's dirt bikes or road bikes. You don't get many weekends off during the year. If I ever get an opportunity to, uh, to have some time off, I'll, I'll get out in the jet ski. I live on the Gold Coast, so the, the broad water is an awesome place to be. For me, it's a pleasure to get into a road car and you've got your creature comforts that you need. And of course, uh, you know, you're not traveling at uh, close to 300 kilometers an hour. My daily car is a uh, Holden Colorado. It's uh, great for the motorbikes in the back, put the kids in the back. It's also a good tow vehicle for the caravan. I've got a Calais V6 Holden Commodore wagon. Everyone thinks I'm in a big hot up V8 on the road, but after a big long weekend of racing, uh, a V8 supercar, I'm looking for something nice and comfortable. Good tunes, just take it easy. The race car itself is purely bred to, to go fast. It's got no luxury in it. It's got no air conditioner, no heater, no radio, no nothing. Windows don't even go down. Bit of a myth about our sport is we roll in a, a road car and modify it, but it's, uh, it's far from the case. We, we start with a big flat piece of metal and we build what we call the chassis, which is all the roll bars. We then bolt all the major components to those roll bars, and then basically, we pretty much stick the tin over the top to make it look like a car. Anyone can drive a supercar, there's no doubt about that, but to drive it at its limit, that's where it becomes difficult. If you work out how to, how to turn it on, in some way, it's like a normal road car. There's three pedals, gearbox, steering wheel, it's all pretty straightforward. Yeah, the clutch bites hard, so you gotta make sure you slip the clutch a bit, but once you get going, it's pretty much like driving a normal road car. The only reason why I get paid for what I do is to, uh, to drive that car fast.